Hello humans, Master General Flex here, and today this is a return of the Yu-Gi-Oh! segment, and what I want to show you is probably the form, it was the format that really, really got me into this game, and it was a very interesting format. Um, I tried, like, no one ever really came up with a name for this format outside of September 2012, but I think the perfect name for this format is the Experimental Zexel format because when the Zexel era first started and XEs were brand new, the format was completely defined. There was no testing whatsoever. Uh, the new XEs, not even all the meta decks played them. They just played what they were supposed to, like uh, Chaos Dragons. Their extra deck almost didn't matter at all. Um, Dino Rabbit and Wind Up it did, but in Zectors they could play without an extra deck. Uh, literally the format was so defined and so it was really the first time in Yu-Gi-Oh where the meta was so defined that people were just bored immediately because if you didn't face those four decks you weren't playing a full game of Yu-Gi-Oh. You were playing against a scrub or you're playing against anti-meta, and that's like. We think, oh, that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh is played now, when before this, Yu-Gi-Oh was never played like that, ever. The the meta decks, when they, even like when Black Wings and Gladiator Beasts were there, there were still so many other decks, and their power wasn't at a point where nothing could keep up with them except those decks. But once, once pre-Experimental Zexel came out, like the format, it was just like, so defined, so powerful that no one really cared. Like if you weren't playing those decks, it didn't matter. But there were a lot of anti-meta decks that had a chance against them, but it really didn't help that much until September 2012 ban list literally scraped away all that power. Um, all the generic power cards, like Tour Guide is the main one. That was that engine was weakened. Dino the Rescue Rabbit went to two. Um the Insectors was dead. Uh Windups lost a hell of a lot of cards, but they were the best deck that survived, but they weren't even the best deck of the format anymore. Chaos Dragons lost two Chaos Source for uh two Darkness Metal Dragons and Future Fusion. So they were almost unplayable now. So what we've seen is, when when this format started, people expected, because we were never in a format where it was like this before, they expected, oh, these decks are still playable, it's just, it's going to be just as ridiculous. So they, so they still mained a hundred million hand traps, even though, as soon as they did that, and so, as soon as the first events happened, everyone just threw away their hand traps, like, Effect Failure was the best hand trap in the game outside of Gores and Trag. Maxi was absolutely useless because the only deck it was good against was Windup, and Windup wasn't that good. So, what we've seen is people expected the September 2012 ban list to be an incredibly, just like a less consistent but insanely powerful format when in all reality the game was slowed down more than any anyone in the player base could have imagined so what do you do when the format is so slow well you exploit it so I tried to find all kinds of decks for this format and I was trying to look for YCS tops and what did well and of course there's like Grand Soil Monarchs uh, heroes all over the place and a few wind up tops here and there but none of them were very defined. I couldn't find a best deck of that format. Like, everything had a few tops. So I started, like, okay, I'm not going to find um, anything that did the best. Let's see what was the most played. So I looked at regional tops, and this deck, my favorite deck of all time, was the most played deck at the time. Chaos Stun. Because, sure, you had only one Chaos Sorcerer and only two Tour Guides, but... You had three Thunder Kings in a format that was already slowed down. You could normal summon Thunder King and just flat out win the duel. You had access to three of them. 
And for those of you who think Thunder King wasn't that powerful, Thunder King immediately after this happened went to two, and then immediately after that went to one because of this format. This card was so powerful, you could not truly out this card because not only was it just a slow format, but it was a trap-heavy format. You could not out this. This was a win condition summon. This could win you games, and it's absurd to think about it, but it was so powerful, people were looking for substitutes for when they didn't draw the Thunder King, and we got Kaiku, Doom, Caliber Knight, all cards, like, good, they either floodgate or they stun just as much, and Doom Cal also shined, because it was like I was saying with the format, Maxi was such trash, like, if you didn't, if you didn't have Maxi for... If you didn't have Max C for a tour guide, you didn't Max C the entire game. You didn't. So people just either sighted two of them or didn't play them anywhere in the deck. It's kind of crazy. We think Max C is so powerful now, but when it comes to slow formats, Max C doesn't do anything at all. And so since you don't have to worry about Max C, and you might have to worry about Valor, not much game two because it's a stun deck. Doom Cal is just going to run over everything. It's not going to lose to very much, especially with all the traps. And uh, this is a lay. This is like a false layout. This is just a custom list I made to show what kind of cards people played. But stuff, the Chaos Stun decks played a lot like these. Uh, a lot of cards were switched around and around. But let's get into the deck. I've been explaining for too long. BLS, Chaos Sorcerer, like these cards. Angors. These were fat of Chaos Stun. Like, they weren't. They didn't win you the duel, but they could just steal the game instantly because of the format was so slow, so they were very powerful. Three Thunder King. I already explained this. This is a win condition. In this format where it's so slow and it's so back row heavy, you could just win the duel from this. Uh, two Doom Cow. This could switch around between a hundred million things, but you know, it's the best card in Yu Gi Oh! Uh, two Tour Guide. Sonya Night Assailant. This is important. This is what really made this format kind of its own style. This was the last format you could ever play Sangyan in. Ever. Um, until we get the errata or whatever. The Tour Guide engine had ripped shit last format. It was the it was the rank 3 engine. The go to throw it in any deck and it works engine. And it was ridiculous. But as soon as it went to 2 not only was it power, not only was a lot of its power gone, but it was so much slower that, um, like, people, th here's the honest truth. Songen is the equivalent of a Tactenborg. When I played in this format, when you grab Songen off a tour guide, you didn't set two and wait for your Songen to float. Especially with these cards in play. You used it as an XE material and lived without its effect. And no, you didn't get its effect when it detached. It, it didn't do that. Like at the start of 2011 it did that, but it doesn't do that. It never did that. So you just lived without your Songen effect. The only reason you played it is because A, it's a tour guide target, and B, if you happen to draw it with no tour guides, you just set it and had a chance to search. Like this card was not... Songyan. It was tour guide target. And a lot of people didn't understand that. The reason it got banned is because they wanted to hit the tour guide engine again. So that's that's a little sad story for you. Songyan could have came back to three without Narada and no one would have played it, unfortunately. But he has to come back with a Narada, of course. Uh, and then I just say, it's actually sadly enough, a little better than Songen. It's also just tour guide target, but um, you didn't use its discard effect. You used it as a man-eater bug, and because of that, it was a little better. Because, let's... Here's what you can search with Songen. Tour guides, Naya Assailant, Effect Veiler. You can search these cards. Not even the best cards in your deck, just... These are support cards for the best cards in your deck, or the support cards for the best cards in your deck, or just fuel for the super best cards in your deck. Like, these these cards weren't important, so why was Songen important? So, that's my two cents. Three effect failure, the easiest thing to side out in the game um, at this time. 
Valor was so much better because effects were so more important than uh, than just uh, stopping your opponent because if they were going to OTK, they were just going to do it. So there was no reason to play Max Z. Just absolutely not at this time. Snowman Eater. This card was absolutely huge, even the format of a 4 in the side, because of uh, Dino Rabbit. Logia, which was the go-to one, not Dolka. Dolka was, came out late game, but early game, it was always Logia. Or, you could also argue Dolka came out game 2 because of side deck, but at the same time, they could side deck things for Dolka when you much rather have Logia. So it was, it was kind of a weird uh, thing. You always had to counter counter side against Dino Rabbit. This is one of the things you cited anyways. Because Logia couldn't stop this. It was a solemn judgment. But people forget. Solemn judgment cannot negate monster effects. So you just flip this up, kill their Logia, and then just go off. Same with Spear Reaper. Except Logia can't answer this. There were no Castell or Diamond Dire Wolf back then to just answer whatever you want at any time. So like when there was a monster when there was like a marshmallow on monster, just a monster with big ass defense or attack, you had to deal with it. Like you couldn't just rank four your way out of it. You actually had to deal with it. And like you as you can see, these were like the best rank fours. And these are just shit now. So like if you had a spirit reaper, you had to really deal with it, which could take forever. It could take like twenty minutes in a duel to deal with a spirit reaper. And then a DD Warrior Lady. Some people loved this card. Some people maxed out on it, and it was insane for them. Other people absolutely hated it. Like, this was, like, the one that switched between Doom Cal and Warrior Lady. Um, I personally never liked DD Warrior Lady ever. Like, I thought it wasn't good. Like, in the side deck, it was a lot better, but, like, in the main deck, I thought it was always trash. Like, you'd much rather summon these guys and set DD Warrior Lady because they can go off under while your set DD Warrior Lady's there. They couldn't do much with these guys. But that's it for the monsters. For the spells 3 MST it had been at 3 for I want to say t this is a third format it was at 3 and it was like the first time people main deck 3 sometimes people main deck 3 but it was the reason you didn't do it most of the time is because you never wanted to draw more than one MST ever because if you have a bunch of MSTs, where are your plays? Where's your like setup? Where's anything? So that's what. But the thing is, this format contradicted that idea because there was just so many traps. Like you see, only eleven traps compared to our twenty. Back then, with Heavy Storm, that was a lot of traps. Like that was a lot of traps. So. That's that's pretty much that. Two duality. Now people when they see like old school decks, they're like, Why are you playing two duality? It's because it was at two. P uh, Konami really wanted you to stop playing this card. Because duality was maxed out when it was played, people just kept playing it over and over and over again. So they finally put it to two and it's ridiculous because the card just it's the card digs you into your deck and locks you out of special summons and you can only activate once per turn. Like, it's one of the most fair cards ever, but dang, they just, they want you to buy their new cards. Like, it was pretty insane. Like, they put Duality 2-2. Two, two. Especially when Thunder King was at 3 in the form. It was ridiculous. Soul Taker, super important. Soul Taker single-handedly changed how we view monster destruction. Like, it was more than just mass removal now. Sometimes you had to kill it a certain way. And this card was for two cards. Elemental Hero of the Shining and Light Pulsar Dragon. Because this is the first time where making a card miss timing really, really mattered. And this card could do it. Um, I'm just going to kind of speed up because I've already spent 15 minutes on this. Allure, Obvious, Dark Hole, Monster Reborn, Heavy Storm. The Trinity of Spell Cards at the time. This was the Trinity of Spell Cards for years. This was such this was so cool playing these cards because they're just broken on their own. Uh for traps two bottomless, you could play it at two tor two torrential, you could play it at two. You could play three of this, but that was ridiculous. This the Solemn Brigade. Holy fuck. 
and two Mirror Force. First time, I, I actually I think it's the second time in Yu-Gi-Oh history at this time where Mirror Force was at more than one. First time ever, and that was pretty cool. Uh, extra deck. You played a bunch of rank threes because of tour guide. You wanted to have a toolbox. Rank three was more of the toolbox than rank four at this time because of tour guide. You got Levier, you didn't make it very much, even though it's a Chaos deck. Gear Brilliant, you made when you needed to summon Chaos Sorcerer or BLS. Tim Tippo, this is... Okay, let me put this right by you. This card was single-handedly the most powerful XC during this time. Wind up Zen Mains. It's a just glorified Marshmallow. On. And this card was actually so powerful at the time that people played Compulse, which they haven't done in years, and not only did they play Compulse, they played Tim Tempo, which could remove some of its materials to make it weaker, so you could answer it earlier. Yeah, so that's a thing. One Acid Golem, obviously to beat over a BLS, or crash into it, I should say. Leviathan, just it's if it's your first turn you really want to summon this if you have the tour guides uh... number thirty nine utopia utopia ray it's kind of like utopia uh... utopia prime now like it's super niche but your extra deck was so like not important that you could play this um... and gemini pearl just trash all three of these but they were so good at the time i guess uh... for synchros Whoever said you never used Effect Veiler as a tuner never played in this format, or just completely forgot about this format. Veiler, Gores, Stardust, Veiler, Gores, Scrap Dragon. Veiler, Chaos Sorcerer, Veiler, Chaos Sorcerer. Veiler, Level 4, Veiler, Level 3. And this, with BLS, was an OTK. You made Synchros more than you made Rank 4s, with Veiler. So, that's, that's something. For the extra deck, like I said about Zen Mains, it was, but Gear Gear also came up soon enough, but Zen Mains, powerful card, you had to get rid of it, and Chimera Tech could just avoid its destruction. To Banisher, everyone sided this at the time. Uh, you could also play 3 Macro and 3 D Fissure, but uh, sometimes people prefer this over them because you could do damage with this, which is fair. Like, it's, uh... Especially at a time when 3 MST and Heavy Storm is kind of kind of risky to invest your uh, game to to a macro. Uh, to Maxi, like I said, everyone in this format hated the card. Uh, Sukiomi just came off the ban list after years of being on there, and no one played it. Yay, no one played it. But people tried to make it good, but it wasn't. To Smashing Ground, another important card in the format, just... Uh, kill a monster without targeting it. Um, it, it like could bait out cards. Um, it was a way to get around. It was a way to kill uh, certain big monsters because w game two, when you're playing a stun deck going game two, you just have to kill their field. Like that's what you want to do. I, I'm just gonna ignore that card for now. Uh, Soul Taker, another one of course. Uh, two Starlight Road. Uh, of course, like, game two, they're gonna side more answers, like, uh, just more destruction, like, if they're not maining Torrential, they're gonna side it in, like, all kinds of stuff in Starlight Road, you already had the Stardust in your extra. Two, <laughs> two Messengers of Peace. This card was actually so good in the format, because everything was so big. Like, paying 100 life for a floodgate was a joke like 100 life are you kidding that in order for me to kill myself with this floodgate I would have to have an 80 turn duel when the when that's not even possible it's not even possible in the slightest so I think that that cost is a joke the cost is a joke is what really makes it good but um is a spell floodgate and there was just like this came in at three once mermails came out. That's what really mattered. Um, mermails made this card playable when it first came out, and it was very hard for them to out when uh, 
not a lot of the Atlanteans were out yet, and uh, stuff like that. Like it was very hard for them to out, especially when if you had Banisher and Messenger of Peace, they lost the duel. They had no answer because the deck was Mermails has been and will always be a push button deck, and when it can't push buttons, it actually just doesn't do anything. So this is a perfect example of why. But that's going to be it. I spent a little longer than I wanted to on this video. Thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, some stuff I could explain way, way more than I did. Um, this format was so interesting. And it's probably my favorite outside of this and a few others. It's probably my favorite format because it was chaos stun format pretty much. And it was also a format where we finally truly got to test XZs without being in such a standard you have to play this deck and with that was really good so thank you all for watching and remember master dinner flags will take your soul